Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today our topic is sentence construction. We already learned to construct sentences yesterday, but we can find ourselves only till a limit in learning singular pronouns. I am a boy, ana waladun. You are Khalid, anta Khalidun. You are a girl, anti bintun. He is a man, huwa rajulun. She is Khadija, hiya Khadijatu. Khadija is an exceptionalism, so it's Khadijatu, not Khadijatun. Now today, we will learn a lot of new art of sentence construction using singular pronouns itself, okay? So, I need a lot of your attention today, inshallah. We start now. How will we use it in an Arabic sentence? For example, it is a house. It is a house. We know what I, you, he, she means. Ana, anta, anti, huwa, here. But we don't know how, uh, uh, we don't know about it in Arabic. I already told you actually that Arabic has no neuter gender. Arabic only has masculine and feminine gender. So it is a house. What is the gender of house? Whether house is masculine or feminine. Whether house is a he or is house a she. If house is masculine, then it will be translated as he or huwa in Arabic. And if house is feminine, then it will be translated as she or he in Arabic. So it is a house. Huwa bin uh, huwa baitun. It has to be translated as either huwa or hiya according to the gender of the ism. House is masculine, so huwa baitun. It is a house, huwa baitun. It is a tree, hiya shajaratun. Why? Shajara is feminine because it has tamarbut at the end, so hiya shajaratun, not huwa shajaratun. Okay, understood? It is sun. Sun is shams. Shams is feminine because it's a name of fire or light. So it's feminine. It is sun. So he is shamsun. It is moon. Who are qamarun. Qamar is masculine because it doesn't fit in any of the criteria of femininity. Any ism that fits in any of the criteria of femininity, it's feminine. And then for it, he uh, is used. And any ism that doesn't fit in any of the criteria of femininity, it's masculine. And for it, hua is used. So another example of it will be, uh, it is a book, huwa kitabun. It is a pen, huwa qalamun. It is a torment, huwa azabun. It is a, it is a sky, hiya samaun. Sama is feminine because it ends with alif followed by hamza. So hiya samaun, not huwa samaun. Okay. It is a sign, hiya ayatun. Aya is feminine because it ends with tamarbut. So hiya ayatun. It is an ay, hiya aynun. Ayn is feminine because it is a part, it is a body part that appears in pair. I told you in criteria of femininity that any body organ that appears in pair is feminine. So, hiya aynun. Okay, understood, inshallah. Uh, we just have to look at the criteria of femininity. According to it, we will judge whether to write huwa or hiya. It's very simple. Now, uh, now I want to add a small knowledge in your brain. He is a boy, huwa waladun, we know. But how will you translate, he is the boy. He is translated as huwa, and boy is translated as walad. But the boy is translated as al walad. You know that? And what was the case one for al walad? I hope you remember, it was al waladu. Remember the rule that al and tanween never appear together on the same ism. I repeat, Al and Tanween never appear together on the same ism. And I am repeating this, I said this before as well, that this is one of the most absolute rule in Arabic. You have to remember this, this is going to come again and again. Because Al is a very common word in Arabic. And you have to remember that I, whenever I use Al on a word, Tanween will not be used. So, the word Al Waladu, its case 1 will be Al Waladu, case 2 will be Al Walada, case 3 will be Al Waladi. It was waladun, waladan, waladin, but al waladu, al walada, al waladi. When al comes, tanween goes away. You have to remember, al and tanween cannot be used together because this is a very, very 
strict rule and uh, al is so common word in arabic so common prefix in arabic that it is going to come again and again throughout the quran throughout this arabic course it's going to come he is the boy huwa al waladu she is the girl hiya al bintu he is boy is huwa waladun but he is the boy huwa al waladu okay she is girl hiya bintun she is the girl hiya al bintu understood it is a book huwa kitabun it is the book huwa al kitabu it is sun hiya shamsun it is the sun hiya ash shamsu i am a muslim and i am a muslim ana muslimun i am the muslim ana al muslimu okay one last thing another knowledge i want to add in your brain the last thing is it the only thing remains actually to learn about singular pronoun is that after this we can move on to plural pronouns tomorrow inshallah but the last thing i want to tell you is the word the usage of the word allah he is allah how will you say he is allah in arabic you would expect that this would be translated as huwa allahun no 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 it will be huwa allahu why because grammatically we consider the word allah as al ila even though note my words i am not saying that the word allah means al ila okay it is a topic of discussion among ulama what i am saying is that grammatically only grammatically when using the word allah in a sentence it is considered as if it's al ila ila means god so al ila the god okay and that's why tanween is never used with al on the same word so it so it can never be allahun allahan allahin no it's only going to be allahu allaha allahi in case one case two case three respectively this is what you need to know about the word allah that allah is as if it's al ila grammatically as if it's it's having the prefix al along with it so we never put tanween on the word allah okay so allahu allaha allahi how will you translate he is allah huwa allahu not huwa allahun check out surah al ikhlas ayah 1 qul huwa allahu ahad over here you can see notice over here huwa allahu he is allah okay so that's all for today wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh